seeing a presence of a quorum, call this meeting of the Amherst School Committee to order at 6.23 p.m. Uh, this is a uh, very brief meeting for tonight, uh, prior to our regional school committee meeting. And the purpose of this meeting is to vote to approve warrants, which is part of our new process um, that the Amherst School Committee just recently adopted. Um, and it's a slightly different process than we've had previously. And uh, just as a reminder, this meeting is recorded and live broadcast by Amherst Media. I'm going to hand out right now to our uh, school committee members the warrant report that was submitted by our finance director, Sean Mangano, just a short while ago. Um, and Mr. Mangano, I'm going to ask if you don't mind uh, just walking us quickly through this. So it's the very first time that we're reviewing this in public. So thank you. It doesn't sound like no. it's on. Uh, Amherst Media is the wanna, public comments. Sean, do you, want, do you want to sit next to me for now? You can just. Well, then. <laughs> All right, so this is um, a motion for each warrant that needs to be approved. So there's three warrants. And it's structured based on the wording that we received from uh, Mark Terry, from Eric. Um, and it's similar to what you're signing, or the, the one person assigned at the region, but it's sort of turned into a motion for Amherst. Um, so just to walk you through how this works for one of these. So the first one, the warrant number is S121119, which lines up with the date that the warrant was generated. And the motion is to authorize payables in the amount of the total amount of the warrant, and for the warrant dated 12-11-2019. And then it breaks the warrant down into the funding sources, or where the money's coming from to pay the expenditures in that warrant. So in this particular case, the general fund expenses of 25,247 dollars Revolving fund expenses of $225 and withholding payments of uh, $3,350. Withholding payments are um, when we withhold stuff from people's paychecks. That is not our money, but their money that's withheld. And then we cut the check to actually pay, you know, whether it's health insurance or um, life insurance or anything like that. So that's how all three of these are structured. Um, there was discussion about maybe some other type of report as well to kind of give maybe a little more, besides the warrant, um, some other breakdown. And so there is a... I put these together. Sorry, I put these together. These are um, a page from the warrant that breaks down the total amount by um, cost center. Um, and so cost centers for us are basically um, the first part of our chart of accounts. And so like the general fund, if you look at the first page, um, there's a general fund section. And then within that general fund section, it will show you um, how much was paid from each of those cost centers. And so you kind of have to learn the cost centers, um, which once you learn them, they're not too hard, but you kind of have to learn the cost centers. Um, but that's a report that's already part of the warrant. And so for example, what that would tell you is if you wanted to know how much we spent from utilities, um, that would tell you how much we spent from utilities. If you want to know special ed, it would tell you special ed, um, and so on and so on. So at some point, you know, we could send out a guide of the cost centers, and that maybe that would be a helpful tool for you to look at. And then that combined with that summary could be, you know, some more backup for the, the votes that you're going to take. I see some nodding heads for the, uh, the guide. Um, I think that, you know, as much information as we can provide sure. to the committee and the community yeah. is, is very helpful with that. And um, I think that, you know, the printout that we're looking at here looks very similar to the previous warrants that we used to sign for Yeah, it's, it's a page that used to be part of that. Yeah. Right, so this is coming from the MUNIS system. Yep. Um, and just as a reminder for the committee and anyone who may be watching, um, that typically these warrants, um, all of the expenses from the, the district go through a very intense internal mm -hmm. review process. So, you know, the school committee is basically just signing off on these expenses, but it does not mean that this is the only point of review for these. Right, these, uh, no, absolutely. We have a purchase order system, so everything that gets there has a purchase order that has to be first completed by the department and signed by the department head, and then comes to me and reviewed by me um, and signed by me. And if it's over $1,000, it's also reviewed and signed by the superintendent. So um, for some things, it may be reviewed as many as three or four times before the authorization to purchase happens. Um, and that has to be in place first before the expenditure can even take place. Great. So this warrant review process is really just uh, for you know public information, mm -hmm. uh, just to keep track of the, the things that are the way that right. the money's moving through. And it allows us to actually release the checks. So we hold the checks until you vote to approve, uh, in the new system, vote to approve the warrants. And once you do that, then we release the checks. Great. Um, uh, I'm just going to pause for a second to see if the committee has any questions or comments. Mr. Dumling? Yeah. Um, 
Does the motion require the reading of all of the details as itemized, I, all the stuff under this includes? I think so. Um, I'm not positive, but I think for tonight, to be safe, probably should just read the details. Right, and yeah, we if can, we could get confirmation of that sure. for the future, that would, that would help. And, and, our, Mr. and do any of these warrants include payroll? Um, not tonight. Okay. No. Okay. If there are no further questions or comments uh, for either uh, Mr. Mangano or the superintendent, I will take a motion. And we have three different motions we want to make. Mr. Nakajima? I move that the uh, Amherst School Committee uh, approve S121119, move to authorize payables in the amount of $28,822.54 <coughs> for the warrant dated 12-11-2019. This includes general fund expenses of $25,247.54, <coughs> revolving fund expenses of $225, <coughs> grant funded expenses, which in this case are not applicable, and withholding of payments of $3,350. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Um, so it's been moved and approved and uh, seconded, and all those in favor? Okay, that warrant has been approved. I will take a motion for the second warrant. Mr. Demling? I uh, move to authorize uh, warrant S121319 to authorize payables in the amount of $124,245.82 for the warrant dated 121319. This includes general fund expenses of $71,874.43, revolving fund expenses of $24,653.01, grant fund expenses of $6,213.47, withholding payments not applicable, capital fund payments of $19,904.91, and student activities of $1,600. Mr. <coughs> Demling, I'm sorry, I'm wondering sure. if you might want to reread the first two lines. Um, I believe you said uh, 1,000 twice, <laughs> just to be, make okay. sure we're being clear. So can I withdraw my motion and just restate the whole motion? Yes. Okay, I withdraw my motion, and I move to approve. Um, uh, I move to authorize payables in the amount of one hundred and twenty-four thousand two hundred and forty-five dollars and eighty-two cents for the warrant dated twelve thirteen nineteen. This includes general fund expenses in the amount of seventy-one thousand eight hundred and seventy-four dollars and forty-three cents, revolving fund expenses of twenty-four thousand six hundred and fifty-three dollars and one cent, grant fund expenses of six thousand two hundred and thirteen dollars and forty-seven cents. Withholding payments not applicable, capital fund payments of $19,904.91, and student activities of $1,600. Thank you. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. We have a second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Okay, that motion has been approved. And last one. Uh, I move to authorize payables in the amount of $47,725.11 for the warrant dated 12-23-2019. This includes general fund expenses of $46,265.87, revolving fund expenses of not applicable, grant fund expenses also not applicable, withholding payments of $1,459.24, capital fund payments of not applicable, and student activities also not applicable. Thank you. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Nakajima. We have a second. Uh, all those in favor? And that warrant is approved. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Mangano. Thank you. And uh, one last thing, and this may not be welcome news. Um, I talked to Mark Terry, and you also still have to sign the warrant. Uh, <laughs> so, so you still have to sign it, um, even though it's voted. Um, so everyone who voted, uh, in the affirmative should sign it and we'll take those back. So at that's the end. what is in this blue Yeah, the, the warrant, all three of those warrants are in those. That okay, so we can pass this down. Does it have to be signed during open session or can it be signed um, after? That I don't think so. I think the vote is what has to happen. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Mangano. Uh, and we have a final motion, Mr. Nakajima. I move to adjourn. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. All those in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <coughs> Seeing the presence of a quorum, I call this meeting the Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee to order. Uh, and seeing the presence of a quorum, I call this meeting of the Union 26 School Committee. And actually, to order. this uh, meeting is uh, being recorded. It's still recorded, right? Yes. Meaning not live broadcast. Oh, no, it's yet. live broadcast. Oh, it's being live broadcast. Good mm -hmm. Ohio, things happen. How wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> How wonderful. Uh, neat. Yes. Well, anyway, so it. Um, I feel, I guess I'm saying this for the benefit of the audience then, because if you're watching at home, you probably already know that. Um, 
Okay, so we don't have minutes to approve. Do uh, you know what time it is? 6.33. 6.33. Okay, so we want to do the public comment when public comment period is. And so with the, with the um, um, acclamation or assent of the, of the committee, I'd like to move the Amherst Pelham Regional School Committee Chair's update um, forward on the agenda to uh, item four and then switch it with the announcements and public comments. Is that amenable? Mm -hmm. I'm saying nodding and amenable in a sense. So um, it, it'll be brief. It actually won't take the next seven minutes. Um, I just want the, for those in the public who have been following uh, our meetings closely, they will see that on uh, at least three occasions, um, we have had executive sessions in order which the purpose of the executive session was uh, denoted as being uh, uh, due to an allegation involving uh, personnel under the supervision of the school committee, namely uh, Michael Morris. And I am hereby um, publicly announcing on behalf of the school committee that uh, that investigation matter is concluded uh, entirely. Um, and there was uh, an investigation conducted um, that did not find any uh, evidence or support whatsoever for the allegations. And so the committee uh, voted to accept that report and considers the matter entirely closed. And that's that. That's the, oh, the other thing I don't, do you have any report? No. Vice Chair and no. Acting Chair? No? no? Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else. Except for a Buckeye apparently has peanut butter in the middle of chocolate. It is an absolutely delicious treat. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? <coughs> it is 6.35. Are there any announcements from um, <laughs> committee members, knowing that we can clearly move forward with that? I would love to state that uh, since you're not a committee member, I you can't raise your hand like that. <laughs> I can raise it. Uh, you can raise it, but it doesn't mean you're going to call them. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, both on other committees in which I've served, as well as this one, I think Anastasia Ardonias has done an extraordinary job. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've worked with um, a bunch of really great school committee members, but none better than her. Uh, and uh, due to my role as chair of the regional committee, I've had more opportunities than either one of us probably cared um, to have to talk and figure out what we were going to do as, a, as a chairs of respective committees uh, and how we were going to move forward with things. and. Um, always I have found you to be uh, thoughtful, uh, deeply committed to the district, um, savvy, uh, and a nice person to work with, too. And I think in the end, since times are often tough, uh, being a nice and decent person is one of the best traits you can have. Because um, <laughs> it, helps, it helps make the medicine go down of whatever you're dealing with a little bit better. And so I really appreciate your service and have appreciated serving with you. And even though I'm looking forward to all future members, I will not look forward to them as much as I enjoyed working with you. Maybe as much, not more. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nakajima. I really appreciate that. Thank you. What time is it now, by the way? <laughs> if I couldn't keep going on with that. That was embarrassing. 37. Yes. We do have approval of minutes. No, no. There are no minutes. There are no minutes. Okay. <laughs> Dr. So, Morris. Can yeah. I stay with that theme? If you uh, wish. Which is tonight is also, in addition to Mr. Donis' uh, last meeting, it's also Mr. Mangano's last meeting. <laughs> in the role of finance director. So I would like to similarly acknowledge his role and contributions to the district. I think uh, I'll start with where you ended, which is being a nice person and a kind person, which um, matters. And so in addition to all the financial pieces and uh, shepherding four towns through multiple conversations over multiple years of assessment methodology uh, and all that goes into community engagement, meeting with PGOs, um, doing new things to engage different communities, LPAC, CPAC, in the budget process, uh, I think he's done it, uh, my opinion, he's done it with uh, incredible grace um, and also incredible creativity. And I think that was acknowledged at the Four Town meeting for those of you who were able to attend mm -hmm. the Four Town meeting. And that's not a, a group that does standing ovations for too many people. Um, and they did, and it wasn't planned. It wasn't, um, you know, I didn't tip anyone off other than Sean who was frustrated with me for acknowledging him at that, uh, at that meeting, but I want to just, that's not on camera, so I want to publicly acknowledge Mr. Mangano's role in the district, um, and we will miss him greatly. Are there any further announcements about how awesome Sean is? Or Anastasia, either one. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're welcome at this point. 
Uh, what's, and also, just if anyone knows again what time it is, just let me know. 6.38. What? 6.38? <laughs> you can misread. I, can, I can't read that, the clock that well. I could easily say it was 6.40 uh, from there. It's but close. I'm not. It's very close. Um, I salute the Amherst High School football team. I was away during their uh, valiant effort and loss, but it was, uh, it was neat to see them get that far. Yep. What Great. other championships do we have this, this fall? <laughs> Or near championships? Uh, we had Western Mass championships, some of uh, girls cross country, and um, our boys hockey is off to a really strong start, 3-1-0, um, and oh, so that's a, a strong start. And what's neat, I'm intentionally extending this a bit, but um, is that it's a partnership between Amherst, uh, Hadley, and Palmer. So we have students, as schools in Western Massachusetts, high schools have gotten smaller. Um, when it's sports like hockey, which are um, pretty in material intensive in terms of rink time and uh, we've partnered in smaller towns to keep their players, uh, their student athletes, having access to sports, and this is a neat one. We don't have many three-town, I think it may be our only three-town team, and it's worked beautifully with the uh, student athletes from Hadley and Palmer. So just compliments to the coach, Mr. Russo, who's also a middle school teacher, but um, to the students for coming together. That's great. Yes, Mr. We, we have a similar uh, arrangement with Granby for football and some other sports, is that correct? We do. We do. I'm not sure that we have three towns. I could be wrong on that, but I'm also intentionally extending this, and it just went to 6.40 on my clock. Uh, just, <laughs> I, just looked, I just looked and saw myself. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, if there are no further announcements from the uh, school committee or from the superintendent, uh, we'll move to open public comment. If anyone has public comment, they can come forward. Uh, I am not, just for the purposes of people watching live at home, I don't see anyone sitting here. Um, Driving through town, by the way, I'd say it was actually very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. Exceptionally quiet. As quiet as I've ever seen it in years. Uh, so it means there really wasn't any traffic that detained anyone from getting here. They were bicycling, walking, or driving. So with that, I will close public comment period um, and remind people again that they can email, use snail mail uh, to uh, correspond with us if they wish. So, um, so this now means at 6.41 or 2, that we are significantly ahead of our schedule. For those watching at home, um, it's mentioned that the times uh, that are listed are approximate, but in this case, um, the moving up of the business is primarily because, you know, we didn't, we didn't have minutes to approve, we didn't have any much announcements, no way of announcements from the committee, and we didn't have any public comments. Uh, so um, with the, uh, again, the approval of the of the committee or general assent. I'm going to move forward with the next item on our agenda, and we will proposed superintendent contract discussion and possible vote contract for Superintendent Michael Morris. I know there was a robust discussion about this at the last meeting. This is also an item that is noted has been um, noted as an item of discussion um, in for planning purposes. For executive sessions and multiple meetings throughout the fall. So I'm hoping there have been multiple opportunities for the public to be able to uh, follow this, engage, learn from last week's meeting as well as associated newspaper articles about it um, as we move forward with our current uh, discussion. So uh, the item uh, has been, it's in the packet, it's in the packet that's available uh, online and uh, is also not I want to say not at all, so I want the those who've been here in the state to nod their heads that I'm right. It has not at all been changed since the last time it was publicly discussed. It has not. Wonderful. So that means that what you see is what you get in terms of the contract. Um, what this does is this uh, essentially ratifies um, that the current contract will run through the end of this fiscal year and that immediate up, immediately upon the end of this fiscal or school year, uh, we'll commence uh, a new three-year contract for Dr. Morris. Uh, that, that contract would run through June 30th, 2023, uh, and would be automatically renewed for a further period uh, unless there is notice from uh, the committees by December 31st, 2022. Uh, the Contract uh, does include a couple. Uh, obviously, obviously, it does compensation, but in other ways, it includes a couple of changes from the current contract, contract they had. But uh, the effective July first, twenty twenty, the superintendent uh, would be paid a gross salary 
annual salary of one hundred sixty three thousand one hundred forty dollars effective July 1st 2021 the superintendent would be paid one hundred seventy two hundred seven thousand uh, dollars and then the committees would uh, uh, meet and confer with the superintendent about any raise for the third year um, if this contract is approved uh, and in addition to that the superintendent would continue to be um, eligible and would receive longevity, longevity payments as well as a lump sum in recognition of his doctorate uh, and as is also the case in the current contract would receive reimbursement for uh, life insurance premium payments um, the termination and severance clauses largely remain the same uh, with a, uh, a change that clarifies the terms under which the superintendent could be removed um, to say the superintendent is removed as a result of willful misconduct, willful dereliction of duty, egregious and persistent documented performance failures, active embezzlement, fraud against the districts or commission of a felonious act or death that the, that the committees could um, uh, pursuant to the termination clauses that elsewhere outline how that process would be pursued um, could uh, terminate without pay. Otherwise, it defines a term of severance for the superintendent of 10 months if they are um, terminated without any of the causes listed in Section 4D of the contract. The, pre the current contract didn't actually provide a level of clarity over these elements. Um, by the way, I was just for the, sake, for, for the benefit of the committees, I was told you didn't actually read these literal language last week. So I'm hoping that's true <laughs> because I'm doing it now so that the public has clarity over the terms of the contract. If I'm repeating something, just wave your hands and I'll stop talking because yeah. I don't mean to chew up clock or something like that. Um, <coughs> the other clauses in the contract, except for the, the dates by which, for example, later in five renewal, the date by which um, the superintendent has to be notified, uh, are all updated. They're otherwise similar. It also further points out in that section five that though the contract can be extended uh, once, if essentially nothing is done um, by December 31st, 2022, 20, um, uh, that uh, that it only can go once, and then um, under n under all circumstances, the contract would have to be new contract would have been negotiated at that time. My record, my memory is that is the similar to a current term of the contract, actually. Uh, and that is what I recall is new in this contract. Again, except for any minor date changes, substantively, I think that's true. Mr. Delman? Yeah, so there was one other item um, of note that was added in, in, under Section 11, Fringe Benefits 11D. Um, I'll just read the text. In consideration of the extremely high number of night meetings each year, the superintendent may take up to two days per month as compensation leave. Said days may be taken in full or half day increments and must be used within 60 day calendar days from the month the days are earned. Thank you. I forgot about that one. And essentially, just for the public's benefit, um, if many of you, uh, and this may be even true of the members of the committee, may work in an office in which if you work at night, you know, let's say you work till midnight to get something done, uh, your boss may say, uh, don't worry about it, come in at 11 tomorrow and you're fine. And as the contract is currently written, and actually as it's enforced, because Mr. Demon and I had a conversation with Dr. Morris and said, so you don't, you don't, and the answer was a good answer. It was the right answer. But it means you don't informally take any sort of comp time if you're burning the clock really late. And his answer was, no, I don't do that. It's not my contract. Um, and that's just setting aside the practicality of, you know, kids get on buses every morning, so logically you end up needing and wanting to get up <coughs> anyway. But, but the point is you also can't take off at 3 in the afternoon or something in the afternoons. So this allows, this A, allows for that to be done, but also B, it um, brackets it, because it, as noted by Mr. Demling's language, it's in a contract, it's time limited in terms of the expiration of the comp time itself, and it also is limited in terms of the amount of comp time that could be taken. But what this essentially does is if the superintendent burns the clock really late and really, it, based on his duties, has the ability to leave, it, two in the afternoon on a Friday, 
uh, he's now going to be free to be able to do that and not have to stay at work because we didn't let him. I know the committee knows this because you already reviewed the contract, but the public doesn't. Anything else? Oh, that's a good summary. Thank you. Uh, are there other, other comments from the committee? I know you did have a discussion about this last week. Mm -hmm. Are there any further comments? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion if that were forthcoming. In, that, in this case, by the way, to be clear, that would be for the regional committee, not for the, not for, uh, the union. I just wanted uh, to state again for the record for you know folks who may not have been watching our last meeting but are watching tonight or will be watching in the future that um, this contract was discussed uh, at length and in great detail both in executive session and then we also uh, made our statements uh, last at our last meeting mm -hmm. regarding our impressions of this contract and so I think you know I still everything is exactly what we discussed and, and how I remember this. So I would like to move uh, to approve the superintendent's uh, contract of employment for the Amherst Pelham Regional Schools. Um, and uh, I don't know if I need to say for the period of time, or is that enough? I think it's enough. Okay. As presented or something. As presented. Is there a second? Second. Then uh, moved by or donated second by McDonald. Any further discussion for the regional committee? Uh, seeing, none, seeing none, um, all those members of the regional committee who approve the contract signify by raising your hand aye. Okay, that's one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Are there nays? Any nays? One nay. Um, so, uh, great. The, the contract is approved. Uh, and I would take a motion for Union 26. If anyone would like to... Make a motion. I move. Uh, so I move to approve the contract um, for Superintendent Michael Morris for the as as reviewed. Uh, is the motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please raise your hand, signifying aye. And it is unanimous, five zero. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Do you have anything you want to say? I do. Thank you. Um, I'll be brief. Um, so I want to start by saying I've truly enjoyed my tenure over the last three-plus years uh, in the role, and I'm honored and humbled by your vote to allow me to continue in the role until 2023, as I was by many of your kind words at the previous meeting. Uh, I chose not to speak at that meeting. I thought it was more appropriate to speak at this point. Um, with your active support and guidance, I believe that the talented staff members in our districts are doing incredibly impactful work to benefit our students, and that's consistent with your mission, you know, the school committee uh, policy AD, uh, and I'll, I'll read an excerpt, to seek, an, to seek to create an environment that achieves equity for all students and ensures that each student is a successful learner, is fully respected, and learns to respect others. Each of our schools is wonderfully dynamic in our three districts and now has a developed articulated plan to realize their potential to support every student. We have record high wait lists for families wanting to enter our schools via school choice, strong support from our member communities, exciting new programs such as Caminantes at Fort River and restorative practices at both the middle school and high school. We're back in the MSBA pipeline to hopefully to transform the infrastructure of our elementary schools in Amherst. We've removed ourselves from the financial cliff stemming from an over-reliance of school choice funds in Pelham. We have seeked and successfully applied for grants to supplement our budgets to support our initiatives. We have significantly increased the diversity of our staff at all levels, and we have an even brighter future ahead of us, uh, along with a tremendous amount of thoughtful planning and hard work. None of that would be possible without the strong leadership of the school committees, a dedicated and talented administrative team, and an outstanding staff working with our students. I'm very proud to be a member of this district and to be a steward of the process to ensure that our schools benefit every single student who walks through our halls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have another item. Uh, item 6B, finance director discussion and possible vote on the appointment of uh, a finance director. Do you want to introduce this, Dr. Morris? Sure. I think uh, for the public, even though it was in the packet, I'm just going to read the memo that's on the back page. I'm, I know it's lengthy, but uh, I do think it's important sure. um, to read verbatim, or as close as I can successfully do that. So as you know, Sean Mangano was departing from the district uh, next week, December 31st, 2019. 
uh, this fall, the district initiated, and we want to thank Mr. Mangano for giving the lead time for us to complete a search. Um, it's important to note. Um, frankly, that hasn't happened uh, in every community when finance directors leave, so I appreciate that. The district initiated surf and search, and Doreen Cunningham facilitated this um, in the fall. She posted the position on schoolspring.com, indeed.com. Uh, we reached out to the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Association of School Business Officials, or MASVO Listserv, and currently there's a shortage of individuals going into this field across the Commonwealth, so outreach phone calls were also made to several candidates in the area to express initial interest and to others who were listed as being licensed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In total, six candidates completed applications for the position. There were screening and interview committees assembled to review applications and interview candidates. The interview committee, which consisted of six individuals, unanimously recommended Dr. Douglas Slaughter for the position. <coughs> the recommendation is being supported by the administration and we're bringing this recommendation appointment for you for approval as per school committee policy BDC. Dr. Slaughter <coughs> is in his 13th year of the district, having worked in the information systems as database an analyst and his current role as assistant director. In this role, he worked closely with the human resources and business offices to implement and maintain personnel and payroll software in addition to his work with our student information software and database systems. Through his work, he has been integral in aiding the preparation of financial and personnel reports for use by all levels of the organization, including the, the many required by DESE for all three of our districts. Augmenting that experience has been his longstanding commitment to community service through his membership on Amherst <coughs> Finance Committee, Joint Capital Planning Committee, Select Board, Audit Committee, and Advisory Board Representative to the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Dr. Slaughter holds bachelor's and master's degree from U University of Missouri and a doctoral degree in chemical engineering from the University of Massachusetts. He holds multiple licenses from DESE, including superintendent, assistant superintendent, and he's been granted a waiver from DESE for the role of school business administrator <coughs> that lasts until June 30th, 2019. Ooh, that should be 2020. I apologize. I still can never really get used to the, when the year transitions, um, so I apologize. Dr. Slaughter is slated to complete the requirements for licensure well ahead of the expiration of the current waiver, and we would expect that license to be uh, achieved uh, at the end of next month, at the end of January 2020. Mr. Mangano has graciously agreed to continue to support Dr. Slaughter if the appointment is approved. In conclusion, I recommend Dr. Slaughter for the position of Finance Director for the Districts. Given his background experience and dedication, I believe his appointment will be a benefit to our districts. Okay, do you have anything further to add? I mean, it's rather complete statement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, both Mr. Mangano and Dr. Slaughter are both here in case there are questions from the committee. So thank you both for coming out on, um, on the 23rd of December. Um, but I think that's as much Great. as I'll share at the moment. So <coughs> what um, I think we'd welcome right now is any questions from the committee. Mr. Dumlin. That's not really a question, just a, just a, just a comment that um, from having um, seen Dr. Slaughter engage in public service in, in Amherst, he has a, I think, a really well-earned reputation as, as hardworking, knowledgeable, and, and kind person who really deeply cares about public service. So I was very pleased to see him put forward uh, for this position. Maybe perhaps the only other thing I'd add is that there was a school can be member on the um, interview committee as well. Not that I need to get into that, but I did want to note that when we when we have interviews for these types of positions, we always encourage and try to solicit school committee members to be on the front end of it as well. So I guess one question I have is, um, you you mentioned that uh, he should be fully certified very soon, as early as late January, but certainly no later than June thirtieth. Um, I guess we we I am assuming you'll be monitoring that and giving us an update at the earliest convenient opportunity in terms of that occurring and if there's any hitch that comes in in terms of, I mean, my assumption would be if for some reason that didn't happen, you'd have to either do another search or extend and I think you'd want to know that as soon as possible, right? That's right, and we'll be in frequent communication with the committee on that topic. Okay, that sounds great. Anything further? Oh, my. So? I've got a couple of questions for Mr. Mangano. <laughs> I'm just curious how, how our electric bus is doing. I have to ask one more time. <laughs> is it still running like it should? The electric bus? The electric bus is doing well. Last I heard, we actually, I did hear about it recently because we're doing a bus contract. Um, and we had our vendors meeting where all the different bus vendors came in. And so we talked about the electric bus, but last um, I knew it's doing pretty well. 
And the second question is... Girls' locker room is in the it, capital plan. I yes, can just preempt that, that, that question. <laughs> and Next the, one. The third one is, how are we doing with electricity and the solar panels in South Deerfield or Wheatley? Where are they? Um, so we've been getting the... So um, Mr. Sullivan's referring to the off-taker agreement that we signed with a, a solar array that went up in Deerfield. Um, we actually signed it like five years ago, but it, it did go two, on. Yeah, two, yeah it's been... Um, in effect since the beginning of like either 2019 or yeah, sometime 2018, ago. but we have been getting the net metering credits. Um, so we get about $30,000 um, each year off of our electric bill because of that. Um, and in terms of overall electricity, again, part of our capital plan is to, if approved, um, see what else we can do in the district, on the middle school roof, in the parking lot, um, maybe other ground mounted areas. Um, to see what other potentials out there for electricity. Right now, we get about half of our electricity consumption covered by the solar array in Deerfield, which leaves another half that we could look at. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And so, by implication, I assume that Dr. Slaughter is comfortable <laughs> and looks forward to answering such questions in the future when the moment arises. Absolutely. It's a, it's a think on your feet moment. You come in with one thing, and you never know what you're going to get from the committee. <laughs> and actually, and actually, Mr. McGonigal, you've done a very, we've done a wonderful job of answering those impromptu questions, and also yeah. making sure that the girls' locker room is finally being renovated. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, but all seriousness, <laughs> if there are other questions or comments, if um, if not, uh, I would entertain a motion if one is forthcoming. So moved. I entertain an actual full oh, motion, full a statement motion. of motion. Um, I move that we accept the appointment of Dr. Slaughter for the position of finance director for the district. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Sullivan. Um, <clears throat> any further comment? And this, by the way, again, I guess we have to do it for this for the region, not for right. the uh, union. Uh, okay, all those in favor? Carries. Okay, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, any nays? Any abstentions? One abstention. So it carries seven, zero, one abstention. Yes? I just want to state uh, for the record that uh, Dr. Slaughter is actually my neighbor. <laughs> and uh, we share a lawn together, you know, great neighbor. Um, I'm happy that he has been... <laughs> Uh, appointed to this, but I just didn't feel that it was correct for me to, to vote for him. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, now to entertain a similar motion for Union 26. Um, I move to accept the recommended uh, appointment of Dr. Slaughter in the mm -hmm. position of finance director for Union 26. Uh, is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand, signifying aye. Opposed? Ne uh, abstain. It passes 401 with uh, Mr. Dunia's <laughs> abstaining. Congratulations. <laughs> do you have anything to say you can? You do not need to. <laughs> I'll be more brief than Mike. Um, thank you all. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve the district in this new way, and hopefully I'll uh, be able to support uh, both you and the superintendent in the mission that we're seeking to, to, uh, to uh, exemplify. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, you want to go first? Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Union 26. So moved. Mr. Joyner moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. McDonald. All those in favor of the motion that cannot be debated? Please raise your hand, and it passes 5-0. We are adjourned. Okay, do you, uh, we have a motion for the region? So moved. Let's move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Uh, moved and second. And also, it is sort of a not debatable. All those in favor <laughs> of adjourning, signifying raising hand, carries unanimously. We are adjourned. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays.